Today's video is all about delicious, comforting and filling, yet healthy, savoury pumpkin recipes. Just in time to plan your meals for Thanksgiving, Christmas or any other autumnal or wintry festivities. And if you enjoy the content that I create, you can support me by getting me a cup of matcha on Ko-fi. Every time someone shows their love, it doesn't only support me financially, but also boost my motivation to continue. So thank you in advance. Here's what we'll make. We start with a comforting and creamy yet quick and easy mong dal. Then, I don't think that any pumpkin season can go by without a creamy and hearty soup. Next, how about a healthy low-fat pumpkin mac and cheese? I must admit I'm very happy with how this recipe turned out. We continue with this heavenly sweet and sour curry that I personally could eat endlessly. And finishing with this festive and extremely filling stuffed pumpkin. I swear, my 11-year-old could eat this pumpkin filling day in, day out. Also, watch out for a bonus recipe somewhere in this video. Let's start with this creamy and delicious pumpkin mong tar recipe. Start by thoroughly washing mong tar and red lentils. Then cover them with clean water and let soak for at least a few hours. Drain, rinse and transfer back into the pot. Next. Add one large or two smaller bay leaves, chopped onion and cubed pumpkin into the pot as well. Then cover with water and let simmer for 10 minutes until the lentils, mong, dal and pumpkin are soft. You may need to stir the dal for a few times. Now add crushed garlic cloves as well as turmeric and mix them in. Then in a glass or a small bowl, Combine curry paste, coconut milk and some water. Pour this mixture into the pot and stir. Finally, transfer baby spinach on top of everything and simply mix it in. It will wilt very quickly and diminish in size significantly. It's easier to add the spinach in two batches. Serve with any cooked whole grains like rice, quinoa, teff or sorghum, whole grain pasta or sourdough bread. In addition, it won't hurt to have some extra salad as a side. To spice it up, sprinkle on a bit of red chili flakes, chili powder or cayenne pepper. Store this dal in an airtight container or jar in the fridge for up to 4 days. Next up is this hearty and creamy pumpkin lentil soup. We start with putting red lentils to soak for at least 2 hours, then drain and rinse. Next, take a medium sized pumpkin and cut it in half. Scoop out the seeds and place the halves face down on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Bake the pumpkin at 200 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes until soft. While the pumpkin is baking, Sauté chopped onion and ginger with 2 tablespoons of water for a few minutes until the onion becomes translucent. Add water 1 tablespoon at a time if necessary. Next, add soaked, drained and rinsed red lentils, cubed carrot and sweet potato, dried sage and turmeric. Mix everything well and throw in bay leaves as well. Now. Pour hot water into the soup pot, stir and bring to boil. Then reduce heat and let simmer until the vegetables are soft about 10 minutes. Turn off the heat. Separate pumpkin flesh from the peel. In case you're using a pumpkin with soft and edible peel, keep it on. For example, you can use the peel of Hokkaido pumpkin. Remove the bay leaf and add crushed garlic. Mix a little and add the oven-baked pumpkin flesh. Using a regular or an immersion blender, process the soup until smooth. It's up to you whether you leave it a bit chunky or blend it very smooth. Adding coconut milk. If you avoid saturated fats, replace it with any other nut or seed butter. For example, tahini or cashew butter would be excellent. I recommend letting the soup cool down a bit before adding salt and pepper. It's because the flavours will be enhanced once the soup is cooler. Hence, you'd add more salt to hot soup. Instead of adding salt, 
you may pour a little tamari or add half a tablespoon of miso paste. Garnish with grated nutmeg, extra dried sage, chili flakes or cayenne pepper, and pumpkin seeds. For a complete and balanced meal, eat this pumpkin soup with a green side salad and a slice of sourdough bread or cooked grains like quinoa, rice, buckwheat, millet, sorghum or teff. Next up is this ultimate comfort food. Healthy and delicious butternut squash mac and cheese. Start by peeling the butternut squash and cut it into cubes. Then steam until soft, about 7 to 10 minutes. Next, transfer the cooked butternut squash, silken tofu, garlic, nutritional yeast and Himalayan salt into a blender or a beaker and process until you have a smooth and homogeneous consistency. You may need to add a little water if the sauce is too thick. This mostly depends on your squash. First add the steaming water as it's delicious and sweet. Then if you need some more, take filtered water or even plant milk. Here you go. Here's the creamy sauce. Now take any preferred cooked pasta and mix it with a mac and cheese sauce. If glycemic load is crucial to you and you'd like to eat a decent portion of this yummy pasta, go for naturally low glycemic pastas like edamame and lentil pasta and feel free to eat twice as much. Needless to say, this is not a balanced dish on its own, therefore have it with a proper side salad of greens and some raw veggies. Garnish with grated nutmeg, dried sage, chili flakes and some extra nutritional yeast or vegan parmesan. Now let's make one of my favorite comfort foods, tomato cauliflower pumpkin curry. This is simply divine with pasta or cooked rice. Here are all the simple ingredients, pumpkin, cauliflower, crushed tomatoes and tomato paste, coconut milk, curry paste, onion, garlic, ginger, chickpeas and spinach. We start with sautéing chopped onion and ginger with a few tablespoons of water until the onion becomes translucent, about 3 minutes. Add water one tablespoon at a time whenever necessary to prevent sticking. Next, in a mug or a small bowl, prepare the curry sauce by combining coconut milk, water and curry paste. Pour this mixture onto the onion and ginger and mix. Add a little bit more of water and bring to boil. Then, throw in pumpkin cubes and cauliflower florets. Bring to boil again and simmer at medium heat for 7 minutes until the pumpkin is almost tender. After that, pour in the mixture of crushed tomatoes and tomato paste and stir to combine everything well. Cover with lid and bring back to boil. Once it's boiling, simmer for another 7 minutes. Tilt the lid to let the vapor out. You also may stir occasionally. Next. Turn off the heat and add crushed garlic cloves. Then mix in fresh baby spinach as well. Simply stir it in as there's no need to cook it. The heat of the curry will wilt the spinach quickly. By the way, you may add more spinach, even twice as much. Finally, pour in rinsed and drained cooked chickpeas and give it a stir. Let cool a bit to enhance the flavors. Pair this curry with whole grain pasta or any preferred cooked grains like quinoa, rice, buckwheat, millet, sorghum, you name it. Garnish with fresh coriander or parsley, sesame seeds or pine nuts and optionally some nutritional yeast. To enhance the flavors even further and boost iron absorption, squeeze a bit of lemon or lime juice on top as well. And for a balanced meal, it wouldn't hurt to have a proper side salad. Before we move on to the last recipe, here's your bonus. I simply love this squash casserole. It's a perfect meal for those dark days ahead. Recipe link below and up here. The only difference is that this time I used grated fermented tofu instead of cashew cheese. You may try the same. Makes the recipe quicker and more effortless as well. And we'll end the video with this divine festive stuffed pumpkin. Perfect for Thanksgiving, Christmas or any other autumnal or wintry festivities. First, let's bake the pumpkin. Cut one medium-sized pumpkin in half and remove the seeds. Like that. Then, 
Place the pumpkin halves face down on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and bake at 200 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes until the pumpkin is soft. Remove from the oven, flip them around and let cool. Flip them around again when they are not hot anymore to prevent drying. While the pumpkin is baking, cook soaked quinoa and lentils with a bay leaf and let them cool. Get all the details about this step from blog post. Next, finely slice the mushrooms and throw them into a pot. Simply fry them dry, mixing occasionally. It will take about 5 minutes, but water starts to separate. Once they are sizzling in their own juice, add chopped onion. Stir and cover. Sauté for 5 minutes. Turn off the heat and mix in dried basil, smoked paprika and ginger powder. Then add tamari and stir. In a small bowl, mix avocado cubes with half tablespoon of lemon juice to prevent browning. Now transfer all the filling ingredients into a large bowl and gently mix them through. Obviously, remove the bay leaves first. Finally, add nutritional yeast as well. Next, let's work on the pumpkin halves so that they stay upright. To do that, remove the stems or tails on both ends and adjust the cutting angle according to the shape of your pumpkin. Like so. Stuff the pumpkins with a filling that will be enough for four halves and pour on this delicious and herby cashew miso dressing, the recipe of which is in blog post. Simply divine. So, which ones will you make and which was your favorite? And don't forget that you can show your love by commenting, giving a cheeky thumbs up, sharing, subscribing or heading over to Ko-fi.